This is Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Yay. Hi, everybody. How's it going? It's exciting to be back. As always, so fun. We're here another fun Monday night. Over 20-some comedians signed up for tonight's show to do a minute and hang out and see what happens. Here we are. Uh, fuck yeah, it's been, uh, our last episode was with Marin and Benson at the L.A. Podfest. So this is the first episode following that. That was a lot of fun. A lot has happened since then. Hell yeah. I died. It's true. We, we missed, uh, last week because you had, a uh, Selma, Selma Hyatt, or Selmanella poisoning. Oh. Bad and, chicken? Yeah, bad chicken. So Friday night I ate, uh, El Pollo Loco, which is, uh, they get their chicken from Foster Farms. And Foster Farms is closing all these plants right now because all these people are like getting sick and stuff. But there's no government to actually for, oversee all this. So people are just dying from this fucking shitty chicken. And so I ate it right before Podcast Fest. Friday night, everything fine. Friday around 6 in the morning, fire out of my ass, my oh. nose, my mouth. It oh. was the worst fucking five days of food poisoning I've ever so had. So when you life. always make fun of me for being a vegan, you factor in that not only does that never happen to me, but I haven't had like a cold in about two years. Well, you could get that shit from, you can get crap from kale. You know, you could die from kale. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, I could. I could really, I hear about that <laughs> all the, the time. You'd be the biggest pussy ever if you die from kale. Though. I've heard of so many people. The new kale overdose outbreak that's yeah. happening. There's a lot of bacteria in kale unless you cook it. Just like chicken. But yeah, so... <laughs> That's some scary talk, and speaking of scary, that makes me think of Halloween. And oh, we yeah. have some exciting news about Halloween this year, everybody. Yeah. We're, Segway. We're going to be in San Diego. We're going to have a Halloween show at the American Comedy Co. It's going to be me, Tony Hinchcliffe, Sam Tripley, and there's a lot of special guests that we've already booked, uh, secret guests. And uh, we're even talking to the, uh, the old Jew, Ari Shafir. He might, oh, wow. He, he might be in town. So Holy moly. So it's going to be a good party. It's uh, AmericanComedyCo.com. And then, uh, where were you? You, you were, you, you've been, like, is there anybody here from Windy City Weekend right here? Yeah? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. Super. You missed all that. I know, I got booked, uh, last second to go to Seattle and work there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, and then I traveled all day on Sunday to get back here yesterday. But, um, and I can't believe that I missed Windy City Weekend, it's, of all the of all the gigs that I had, because I just found out that I have a shit ton of parking tickets that I'm gonna contest. But let's just say that if you got if you get a few sixty some dollar parking tickets and you forget to pay those, it gets to. Well, I guess you you get guilty. So when you get offered something, like there was a part of me, even though no comedian should ever turn down a gig, there's a part of me that's like, no, I'm not gonna take the deal. I'm gonna stay for Windy City Weekend, yeah. but. It was cool. It was cool seeing them, like, because I don't know if you ever saw the movie Windy City Heat. I'm sure you have. I'm obsessed. Yeah, it's one of my favorite movie. movies but, ever. But seeing it with a... That's was, what killed me, is that I'm one of its biggest fans. I obsess it, about it. It was like watching Rock, Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then, and then, like, at the beginning, or at the front, you know, uh, Scary Perry sitting there in the front row, and people are just fucking with him. Like, guys are giving him, like, bags of popcorn and, like, pouring it all over and <laughs> stuff like that. And, Wrapping him up with toilet paper and spraying him with water pistols. It was fucking amazing. I can't amazing. believe I missed it. I can't wait to... I, I hope there's some way to be able to watch that. I don't know. Eventually, hopefully. hopefully. Um, fuck yeah. As always, guess who's here, everybody? Our head of security. The one and only Iron Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's always something a little bit different with them. Uh, Patriot, how have things been? I'm glad to be here on Columbus Day with you, Tony. Oh, it is Columbus Day. You know, it was 521 years ago that Columbus first landed in the Bahamas. It must have been a scary voyage for him, Tony. Why Why, why is that? Because he didn't know if he was going to see land. It's kind of like this show. We're on a, skill, we're on a scary journey with uh, Kill Tony. We don't know if we'll ever see land. What the fuck are you talking about? Anyway, Tony, I had fun at the podcast festival. <laughs> Mark Marin really did like me. He said I could come over to his garage anytime. I didn't hear him say that to you, Tony. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck was that? <laughs> Got a little excited at the end there. He even said that I could come and look at his, Jessica, his girlfriend Jessica's feet. Yes. Yes, it's true. 
No, it's true. I'll, I'll take you if you're nice, Tony. I'll take you with me. <laughs> as soon it, as I get time out from my busy schedule, you know, I'm a very busy man. Yoga yeah. on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Parks and Recreation, Thursday, Bingo, Friday, Bowl. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Wednesday, you work for Parks and Rec, but Thursday's Bingo? Uh, yeah, I'm a busy... I, I do yoga, too. I got... Um, Wait, I got, Bingo with where? You play uh, Bingo? I do meetings with Scientology on Saturday. What? Are you a Scientologist? <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Yeah. Wow. We did get to meet him. It was our first time meeting him without the costume. And he used my uh, hotel room at the LA Pod Fest to change into his outfit. And you did leave a sock, by the way. And I was going to bring it, but it was so crunchy and no, horrible. Stop it. That couldn't have been mine. I, I, I took inventory when I got home. Everything was with me. That must have been it was, somebody else's creepy sock. Oh, uh, then it was somebody left. <laughs> that, Red Band, there's something was... I want to say to you, Red Band. What? I saw that picture with you of Jimmy Kimmel. At the 10-year anniversary of Windy City Heat, which, by the way, is a film I love. I love Scary Perry. I saw the picture with you. Back in May of 2012, I was on the Jimmy Kimmel show in my old Iron Man suit for the premiere of The Avengers. Scarlett Johansson was on the show. We had a contest where we, drove, where we drew T-shirts. The Hulk was on there, Chewbacca, SpongeBob. Juan Diego, oh my, my good God. friend that plays Captain <laughs> America. SpongeBob was there. <laughs> the weirdest name dropper in the city right now. Spongebob, Chewbacca. It was all the Hollywood and Highland people? Yes, yes. It was the characters, and we were there. It was a, it was a good... We got paid union scale, and they even played it again, and we got paid another check. So it was, it was nice. I liked it. It okay. was it was, it was a fun it was a fun time. But um, what's been going on with you, Tony? Well, uh, we sort of just talked about that. Uh, it was in I Seattle. Heard, another thing. I heard you on the podcast with Tom Segura and his wife, your mom's house, and you would have loved this, guys, if you want to listen to this, because this was just done last week. Tony's mom is on this show. They call to Ohio, Youngstown, and this woman, she is funny. You're going to see where he got all his, <laughs> his uh, wits about her. Because this woman, she's real cool, but if you don't pay her on time, that's when she turns ugly. There you go. Fuck yeah. So you uh, sent me a song, uh, as you do sometimes. Yeah. And, and you know why I'm doing this? Because at the podcast festival, Tony kept saying, holy moly. Do you remember that? No. You kept saying, if you go back and watch the tape, you kept saying, holy moly. And I have a song by the same name. So I said, I thought it was time to do it. My, oh my this is God. my father's <laughs> favorite song. What a my, my, my dad Bubba in Mississippi. He what loves a, this song. All right. Here it goes. Holy moly. Turn up, turn up. Feel it. Come on, Outside of Chicago, there's a lot going down. There's a car girl, her name's Tony. She doesn't mess it around. And I saw her holding Molly, holding Molly, holding Mo on the road to Chicago. From the south side, holding Molly, holding Mo on the road. On a pillow So sweet and lovely With a cute little note It said call me My name's Tony She left a number that was all that she wrote And I saw her Rolling moly Rolling moly Rolling moly On the road to the call girl From the south side Rolling moly Rolling moly On the road I'm playing moly Guys, give it up to Iron Patriot. Nobody was clapping yet, and you said thank you. Thank you. With that, I don't think the people had decided what they wanted to yeah, do yet. Yeah. Let, let, me, let me explain a little bit about that song. That song is oh, about geez. a call girl named Tony on the south side of Chicago. It's an imaginary girl. It, it has no race specific. It could be Tony Braxton. It could be Tony Collette. It could even be Tony from Captain and Tennille. So it's an imaginary call girl. I told you I used to live in Chicago. That's on the south side, Tony. It's the Windy City, too. Yes, yes. It's a, I'm tying it all together. Uh, yeah. this Tony, are you, wow, Tony, there you go. Yes, I feel, I feel Tony's a hooker is what he's trying to say, uh, right? Yeah. Did you yeah. did you write that in your Dirty Crabber days? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the, so I, that's I an act classic hit. How many songs did Dirty Crabber have? Uh, I just started. I got a lot more. 
I like oh, that geez. song, by the way. That... I think that's, that's my father and Bubba's favorite song. I told well, you. Well, the thing that I've noticed, when, the thing that I... that, he starts dancing. He'll just he'll start doing this Bubba strut. He'll just go like that. What I've noticed about all the Dirty Crabber songs is that uh, is that you you get it after about like forty seconds of each of them. <laughs> like I can't imagine listening to that for three and a half minutes like a normal song because you just. <laughs> All right, and you always have like a little cute dance break in between choruses, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Bow, bow, bow. Solo. And you could shake your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just bringing back a lot of memories. I appreciate you guys letting me do these tunes. It's good. It reminds me kind of of the presidents of the United States of America, also. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of influences. Some people say I, I sound like Frank Zappa. Mm. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's the Iron Patriot. <laughs> Uh, here with us, as always, to make sure nothing gets too crazy. He has a suit made out of whatever the fuck. It's super heavy and crazy. Fiberglass. fiberglass. ABS plastic in the middle. The heaviest fiberglass ever. Yes, yeah. He has to take the bus here because he can't sit down. So he has to take the buses because he can't sit down in this $5,000 uh, outfit yes. that he bought himself. Yes. Um, it takes him an hour to get ready and... He's always with us. He's never missed a show. The Iron Patriot, everybody. Um, so uh, now that we, we know what goes on here, a uh, bunch of comedians get to come on and do 60 seconds, and uh, then we talk to them about uh, what happened and maybe who they are and whatever the fuck. Um, so what do you say we get this thing started by bringing up our guests tonight? Both of them very good friends of mine, two of the funniest people I know, uh, no particular order. Um, the fighting pride of Kansas, everybody. I mean, holy moly, this guy is hilarious. Uh, check him out on uh, his show, The Rick Ingram Experience, now on YouTube. The one and only Rick Ingram is in the house, everybody. He was here during episode one. He was the only guest on the show. And this is his first return since the pilot episode, when it was actually called Hinchcliffe's Notes. Yeah, I was going to say, you said he's never missed an episode, but right. I've never seen him in my life. That's true. That's, that's right. You're the only guest that hasn't had the Patriot experience. Yeah. I'm glad, Rick, we can do it right this time. You came mm -hmm. back, we do it the right way. I want to say something to you, Rick. Oh, oh, wait. And also, our other guest. Um... <laughs> Just when you think it couldn't get any better, there's two guests. Uh, I've seen him. Uh, this is one of my oldest, best pals. We've been roommates. Uh, one of my great buddies. You know him from his appearances on Mad TV and Comedy Central. Put your hands together for Sandy Danto, everybody. Is it Mad TV? It wasn't Mad TV. Is it Mad TV? Yeah. It was Mad TV. Long time ago. Wow. For 45 seconds. When did Mad TV end? Now I'm confused. I don't know. That's interesting. As far as Not anyone in here enough. knows, <laughs> it never existed. <gasps> Fuck yeah. So, Sandy, this is your first time on the show, and this is Rick's first time with the Patriots. I had a, so. I had a brief cameo on the show with Polly yeah. several weeks ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. Lucky. That was Kill Tony 13. <laughs> <laughs> with Doug Benson. They, they made a surprise appearance at the end. That was very special. Do you have, a, do you have like, a card catalog system in that suit? <laughs> Yeah, I need it. I need. I need a clock so I know what time it is. It's one of the main uh, issues with most of the Iron Man movies yeah. is he can never figure out what time it is. Yeah. It's true. All those so, fancy uniforms. Everything is exactly the way it is in the movie, which is cool. Sandy, can I say something to you? I was, re I was reading about you today. I see you're from Detroit. You must be happy because your football team is doing pretty good sure. so far, first yeah. place. Um, I first saw you on Ice House Chronicles number 55 back in December of 2012. Wow. wow. I really like your Polly Shore impersonation. Oh, it's thank you. Funny as shit. I like a raper that knows his dates. <laughs> <laughs> could, you, could you do that voice for the remainder of this show? Oh, wow. You, you no, want me yeah. to do it the whole, entire time? Well, as much as you can, because I love it. it. It makes me laugh. It's, it's all about him with this. Uh, <laughs> this what do you say right now? Dude, it's a whole thing with you. <laughs> dude, it's it's not happening, dude. It's gotta be. It's gotta be what? It's gotta be organic. Oh, he just gave you the laser beam <laughs> with his left hand. That means is that, that like getting the light? <laughs> Paulie got the light from Iron Patriot. Rick, I want to say something to you real quick before we begin the show. I am dying to Rick, hear it. Rick, yep. this is what I want to say about you. Um, 
Wait, I about me? To, Are you saying it about me or to no, me? No, no, to you. I listened to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank, uh -huh. and I was amazed about your story. From the age of 23 to 30, you had severe stomach pains. Mm -hmm. You are you have a high tolerance of pain, Rick. I, I could not believe that story you went through. They finally diagnosed you with diabetes, but they so did true. not know what the hell was going on. You went through several doctors. Is How this did guy you make like it through just that exposition? Experience? He just provides backstory, which is very Iron Man like also. I love that of all the research you did on Rick, uh, the thing you wanted to talk to him about with the th was the, his stomach pains that he had. You know, one time he projectile vomited seven <laughs> feet in the air when he was with his mama. Fact. Wow. Well, this guy, he knows a lot about people's moms, which does, is uncomfortable. He, do, he does his research. He's a big fan yeah, of the... Yeah, I want you to meet my mom someday, Tony. I, yeah, oh. I think we all would like Yikes. that. I think it's Dude, fair my to mom say. started what, this whole fucking thing. What superhero thing. is she? <laughs> She's the super crab mama. I want to meet your cocker spaniel. What? I call her June. She's it's Bubba and June. They're Mississippi. They're very proud of me. They they they're very glad I got on this show. They they love it. Your those are your parents' names? Yes, Bubba and June. In real life? Yes. Wow. Bu Bubba and June Patriot? Yeah. Have you ever been to Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, wow! I mean, that, that <laughs> laugh is that special. That laugh is something that would make Sandusky cringe, which is nice. <laughs> well, Very creepy. Yeah, man. And the Nazi from one of the Indiana Jones movies is up there, which is <laughs> it might yeah. not be him. <laughs> that is a bright yellow jacket. Hey, is that true that you met um, Polly in an airport and he said you were a combination of Jack uh, Belushi and Jack Black? He he did say that to me, but he didn't. It was not at an airport. Why don't you do your research, Patriot? Uh, well, you can't trust everything on the internet. I'm sorry about that. I don't like to. I like to be accurate. Oh, there are inaccurate rumors about you and Polly. There's a lot of stuff swirling around about me on the internet. Don't believe anything you heard on country music television. First of all, Rick, when you were having all these stomach <laughs> problems, I remember that time period yeah. barely. Uh, what was the kind of stomach shit that you that you were going through? Because I remember just you like pain. At, yeah. At points. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of vomiting nonstop. Uh, I went into diabetic shock when I was in New York, when I was with Bobby Lee and uh, Freddie Lockhart. But I didn't have insurance, and I'm a fucking man, so I just didn't eat for about six days, so my blood sugar would drop to a decent level. Wow. And uh, pretty much just sick the whole time. Wow. Spent a lot of money going to doctors at first, and that's when I found out doctors don't know shit. So yeah. it was a fun lesson learned. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And because you didn't know that that's what it was, uh, you were just, you know, you couldn't pinpoint it, so. Yeah, well. What I, did you I, think it was? Like, what were. I was told that it's um, severe acid reflux and intestinal migraines. And then uh, it was like a, a weird Greek doctor. Wow. And that's when I learned never trust the Greeks. For anything. Not the yogurt, not nothing. Patriot, Unless Patriot. gay bathhouse is pretty have, much Have you ever thing. had any ailments? Dude, like, what about ever so crates? Good. So true. So true, Wheeze. Dude, you got to think about stuff. No, I bet, but one thing I do know, I've had stomach problems before, and it's the worst thing you can experience, because that's like the center of your whole, you know, your, your being. It's just wow, terrible. Wow, you're like a fucking doctor you think over it's there. Worse? You really figured that out. You think it's I like feel, worse than dick cancer? Yeah. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> Hell yeah. I didn't hear that. What'd you say? <laughs> anyway, so uh, where, where did you where did you get this guy? I know he showed up after that episode, after that first hey, episode. Hey, I heard you Yale. talking on Red Band on the um, Ice House. There was another girl that that ate El Pollo Loco too. Yes. Did she go through the same amount of time? She, she was very young, so her body was. Uh, Accepted it a lot easier, but wow. yeah, she went through uh, the same stuff to a degree. Like hers wasn't uh, as horrible as mine. But for like a couple days or something. Yeah, like three or three days she had it. Well, that's the proof right there. That's the proof in the pudding. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. Well, that's the part of the show where uh, Patriot has a lot of input. Um, yeah. It almost makes you hate America in some ways. It's true. Maybe we could change him to a country we don't like patriot. The Canadian uh, patriot. <laughs> I'm running for president in 2016. 
My platform is going to be protect the feet. Dude, okay. we sh <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it's going to be a tough campaign. Yeah. Uh, by the reaction you got on the original pitch of it, so. Yeah. Dude, yeah. he just got sequestered, right? Dude, come on, Ollie, don't Sequest. say that's dude, too many syllables. Dude, for it's you, nice Polly. of him to be here during the government shut down. <laughs> Jeez. Well, Almost I'm super like excited that uh, we have Polly Shore in the house for, uh, you guys know the format of the show. Um, so there's a bunch of comedians. Rick, you've done it before. Sandy, you basically know what's yeah, going on, know, right? So. Awesome. Yeah. So comedians each do 60 seconds. When they hit 60 seconds, you'll hear the meow of a kitty. And then when it, if they run their time, the angry West Hollywood bear comes yeah. So don't run over your time limit or else that bear's going to come I out. heard I heard the angry West Hollywood bear is a Timberwolves fan. Oh, that's a different uh, that's a different impression that you just went into no. there. What was that? Was that one of the sound effects? No. She got nervous on the soundboard there. Loser. Um, it's weird seeing Laney without Jerry, by the way. Where is she? Oh, wow, Laney. Hello. Oh, there's Jer Bear. He was just oh, probably yeah. spooning a couple of teenagers somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Slick dog. Heck the pride yeah. of Aspen. <laughs> <laughs> Looks fantastic. Have you guys ever talked to the Iron Patriot before? If you had one question for the Patriot, what would it be between the two of you? You can put your heads together. How do you get into that thing? Is what she said. It's like launching the space shuttle. It's a very slow process. I gotta make sure every step is correct because if I screw up, I'll pay for it in pain. Hmm. Uh, I kind of look like Polly Shore because I had this whole story. I came four years ago to talk to Dean. No one said they wanted to hear the story. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Dude, but one thing in common, I came four years ago, too. Nice, Paul, Whoa. you son of a bitch. Right? <laughs> I see what already you on did. the money. So let's get the show started. Uh, your first comedian tonight. Are you guys ready for this or what, huh? It's crazy. Got so many talented names in there. All right, your first comedian tonight is Scott Kidd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Professionals walk so far. <laughs> Wait, that's old shtick, right? Yeah. Is it on? Hello? Josh Martin didn't do his job. He's doing Will Tilly. <laughs> oh, oh nice. hello. There it is. Can we reset the timer? Thank, Thank you. you. All right, how y'all doing tonight? All right, let's feel some energy in the room. Yeah. Make some noise. Hello. All right. Wonderful. Great. Strong intro. Anyway, uh, so I work in a casino, and I don't understand compulsive gamblers. I understand them, but I don't understand why they still continue to live. Um, one reason I don't understand them, because when they sit at the table and lose all their money, they go, <laughs> But what they're really thinking is, Ah! And they just imagine a guy jumping off a building or two trains hitting each other, or, I don't know, 9-11. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And if uh, Asians are good at math, then why do they spend all their time in casinos? Anybody want to answer that question? No? All right, I'll say something else racist about a different race. Damn it! <laughs> the bear came wow. out quick on that one. Um, I don't think he has a watch either. No. <laughs> I had no idea what you were talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, he started out strong. Yeah, obviously. yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. He cheerleaded. Yeah. He cheerleaded his way into a good beginning, <laughs> and then he hit him strong with the segue. Anyway, <laughs> from there, skyrocket to success. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had just finished saying I can't wait to not be called up. And then they said my name, and I felt like an ass. So I figured I'd make an even bigger ass of myself. And I'm going to stop talking now. That's a good game plan. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Who did you make an ass out of you? Who did you say that to, that you weren't going to get picked? Uh, I was secretly, uh, like, telepathically sending it to you, Tony. But then I guess you read it. And wow. Yeah. Wink, wink, wink. Yeah, that might be the creepiest shit any yeah. guys Bosco. ever looked right in my eyes and said. Bosco. I was trying to telepathically send it to you. 
It's like, well, that's a weird Tony. attempt, man. It's better than Why do you have uh, to say your name? He was looking right at you. Yeah. Tony. <laughs> um, it got weird. And I like he, he was not doing well. And so then he was like, well, now that they don't like me as a person, right. I should go racist. <laughs> hmm. Interesting right. plan. And there was also there was also one part in the middle of it all in which he had also abandoned their everybody liking him and out of nowhere I don't even think at a proper place just said the words 9/11. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm in this hole now. What's the That's quickest way out? That's a good hook out? though, because if you just have jokes that don't go well, right. you could just abandon them and say 9/11 and just Every if time. you repeat that enough, it becomes a good hook. Right. Yeah. Push the fear. You know, the government. Just, all, you. all your jokes should just <laughs> fall off a cliff, and then you mention 9/11 and move on to the next joke, and do that again, and be like, "So 9/11, anyway." Yeah, and maybe end every set with a full suicide bombing. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. No. Oh, get at the ice house. Do some else. I think if you're gonna talk about a, having a job as niche as. Uh, a casino worker, you gotta try to relate it to jobs that other people have. Oh, that's a great point. Like, could you imagine if you worked at Petco and people got addicted to that or something silly like that? I bet they do. That's great. <laughs> wow, there you go. Why, why are we getting judged? <laughs> <laughs> I should get judged for saying that. <laughs> there should be there a should panel, be a panel of open of mic judges. Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> there should be a panel of uh, open micers judging the judges. But I don't know. That's just. Also, he uh, he nailed it with the comic jacket. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I mean, totally. Yes, I, I thought that yeah. as soon yeah, that, as he got up here. It's uh, cruelty free. We know. As opposed to my jokes. Hi, <laughs> zinger. Wow. Barely made sense. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> so stretching, I stretching. What I mean, like, where do you get a jacket like that even from? Like, where do you? Uh, it's like a Macy's thing right there. No, yeah. it was, uh, it was Target Murphy's Target garage sale, actually. It looks like Pacific Sunwear, if I'm being 100% oh. honest. <laughs> Not OP? Uh, Macy's. It was Macy's? Yeah, it is Macy's. Got that at the DX. I could tell it was a Macy's. Yeah? Yeah. How? Just the, by the look, the smell. Oh. <laughs> the smell. The person inside of it. <laughs> Well, there you go. We have a lot of people, so there you go. Scott Kidd, everybody. Right, thanks, Scott. He's got a little something for... Uh, He's going places. He could take that Petco thing, and in case he wants to just continue to fail, he could have the 9-11 hook. So whether he goes good, he's got something, and if he wants to not do good, he could just be that 9-11. He could be the 9-11 comedian. Yeah. I, I've heard a lot of people say, I like a lot of comedians, but... I. I wish there was a 9-11 comedian that yeah. just repeated it. The problem is going to be there's going to be conspiracy theorists that say he bombs like that on purpose. Yeah. 9-11 style. <laughs> Could be. He's fake like Tower 7. <laughs> Patriot, what did you think of Scott Kidd? Um, I was thinking about his performance at the podcast festival and how much he changed. Because remember, he's doing that real country guy. And then he changed. He's kind of more normal this time. Okay. Um. And then I saw there was another Kill Tony who was normal before that. So what do you think about all these changes? What do you think he should do? Do you think he should do that character? He's, he's, he's did trying to find his voice. You definitely, yeah. you can tell he's searching for it. Yeah, he's, he's goofing around. He's at Devo Kid on Twitter, by the way, D E V O K I D D. Anyway, your next comedian <laughs> goes by the name of J Mac. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm tired of being reverse stereotypified in this town, in Hollywood especially. I get stereotyped as a stereotyper. And I get it. I know how I look, how I sound, but I'm not a rapper. <laughs> not. But if I was, my rapper name, Iron Patriot, would be Cheetos and Chicken Spread. Because that's what I'm all about. You got to keep it real if you're going to be a rapper. I could never be like a hardcore gangster rapper because they like for their women to be a queen in the streets and a freak between the sheets. But I ain't got it like that. I need somebody between the sheets that's very understanding. <laughs> she could be a freak in the streets, you know. Blow my buddies while I'm watching the game. As long as I'm, as long as I'm getting mines, 
you know? I ain't had enough sex to be freaky. That's the thing, you know, the more sex you have, the freakier you get. My, my biggest fetish is when I can get a girl to be whoa, there. Whoa, 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 you don't fight the bear. Don't fight the bear. <laughs> he, wow. he might be able to fight the bear. He actually could. I yeah. think he might be able to... <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. He sounds angry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> was, the bear lit off an old firework there at the end. <laughs> it's really Chinese. pissed off. <laughs> Fuck yeah, J Mac. Yeah. Ran the light. At least I was running. Hey, oh, nice. singer. He, look, he looked up at the balcony for yes. a laugh at that one. Who? <laughs> By the way, who did that snort during that? Was that yeah? That was a beautiful snort, uh, lady. Uh, yeah, it, it was not only a nice snort, but the Asian girl still covered her mouth traditionally. Oh yeah, even <laughs> though it wasn't her. <laughs> <laughs> that really did happen. I totally thought it was you because so you did, did the I, mouth that's what cover. I thought. That's what I thought. It was really you. I embarrassed her. That's, that's amazing. Nice. Van, that's like ventriloquism. Yeah, you get throw your laughter. snorts. Heck yeah. J Mac, do you often get a uh, do you often draw a lot of snorts from the audience when uh, you're doing comedy? When I'm back home, but it's not laughter; it's just the crank. Oh, I'm falling back on a lot of hacky <laughs> shit. Yeah, it's interesting. What I can. Polly, uh, what do you think of uh, what do you think of J Mac? Dude, we like him, right? Oh, thank Dude, you. look at him. You're a big hit in Oklahoma. Dude, dude, I know. You're telling me. Son-in-law, right? Dude, son-in-law's the Still reason why Oklahoma fell in love with me. Yeah, bro. I want to squeeze you. <laughs> yeah. That is what Polly's actually like, by the way, for uh, yeah, those of like, you that don't know. But uh, way uh, nicer. Yeah. Like, I wish we could replace Polly with just Sandy as Polly full yeah. time. <laughs> I guarantee you, if we talked to Mitchie, she'd be like, he's better, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> he's better now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Fuck yeah. J-Mac, where do you keep your uh, bandana thing that when you're, like, asleep? Or, uh, I picture Full you. Time. I picture you as the kind of guy, for some reason, that might go to bed with, like, one of those sleeping hats on with that has, like, the ball at the end that's extended. Yeah, it's called a sleep apnea machine. That's his hat. Do you really have one? Do you wear? Yeah. You really do. Oh First, how do you have diabetes and I don't? Well, I. <laughs> it, it's a different. It's an kind. interesting like, question. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get to your level. Uh, I I have the kind that God gave, and you're going for the kind that you caused. <laughs> More or less. But you have the American Maybe kind. So yours is the pure American hope, anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't, that's the only thing I can think of. That's why I think I didn't know for so long, because I'm not overweight. I have juvenile diabetes. I just didn't get it until I was 30. So, J-Mac, you were in uh, the comedy boxing matches a few weeks ago. God. Yeah. And let me awesome. just say, the best part about that match was that you chose to wear your shirt. <laughs> that other guy. <laughs> right. I mean, that was frightening. Oh, oh yeah. Was the it, belly button was... Like it was like the crater f killed the dinosaurs yeah. or something. Oh, I thought that was his dick. I didn't know that was his belly button. Who knows? Well, wait, what, did he have an Audi? No, no it just was. Do Audi. people still have Audis? No, that's so. They're odd. not doing Audis anymore. The flanks. The flanks. <laughs> yeah. I sent a picture to a buddy back home. He's he's, he's texted back and said, uh, "Is that a tumor or is his titty?" Damn. Wow. There should be a certain weight uh, by law that if you hit it, like you can't not wear a shirt in public. Yeah, I'm with like you. like it's swimming. I mean, a lot of do you, do you wear your shirt while you're swimming? Actually, not so much. Always did. Do you float up. or sink when you're in a swimming I'm a pool? Sober. Really? I can walk on water and sea water. That's I, amazing. Like, water. <laughs> <laughs> like like I float in fresh water. I can have a beer and a cigarette and just lay out. And uh, I wow. can see that's actually what Jesus <laughs> looked like. They just cleaned his image up for Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I could see him swimming with the shirt off just because he doesn't want to be like Mexicans. That's true. Yeah, I mean, he does have an American flag wrapped around his yeah. head tight right now. Yeah, all this looks way better underwater. For sure. I've got to keep it. <laughs> He's got a great underwater uh, You should see him body. underwater. He looks fat, but you should see him underwater. I'm an underwater Athletic. model. It's like funhouse mirrors. It just works for him. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's great. I Fuck yeah. I well, like getting out the pool. There he goes. J-Mac, everybody. J-Mac. J-Mac. At J-Mac Comedy. J-Mac Comedy. The name of that joke, by the way, there's also a, a one area on these sign-up sheets where sometimes people write down their topic. It leaves a space for it. And the name of that, uh, what he just talked about up here, is what he calls reverse stereotypification. That's the name of that. Reverse stereotypification. And Scott Kidd talked about smoking. That's not what he talked about he at did, all. He didn't mention that whatsoever. But Scott is a fucking liar. He, oh. he improvised some different stuff. He should have tried. He should have stuck with the smoking thing. Yeah, right? no kidding. <laughs> all right, Polly, you having fun? Dude, what's stereotypification? <laughs> Ooh, this is, looks like a new name. Put your hands together for Joe Barron. <laughs> Hello, folks, and here we go. So, I was living in Hawaii, and I finally found out that this girl I really liked dumped a boyfriend. So I figured this is a good time to call her up. I call her up. She was drunk, and she told me. I asked her out. She goes, Joe, I just hope I have visions fucking you. So I told her, well, I have visions fucking you. Isn't that halfway there? Okay, that didn't work. So I figured... I also have something 50% off if you go shopping. She hung up, got mad, hung up the phone. That was it. Didn't say anything about her sisters or nothing like that. So, okay, we go to the next one. Okay, at Cinco de Mayo. I'm staying here. I don't care. Okay, I went to Cinco de Mayo. Went to a concert. This blonde girl, she was very drunk, falling on everybody. And somebody comes up to me and goes, what's her name anyway? I said, well, I don't know, but if I bring her home in about two hours, her name would be Get Out. <laughs> okay, Smitter, Smitter. Wow, he nailed the wave as the cat sound yeah. played. Yeah. There's one thing you got, it's timing. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> the bad Dude. part about it, it actually went better than the first time. Dude, Jay hmm. London cleaned himself up, right? <laughs> True. It's half Jay London, half PJ, I think. <laughs> Hell yeah. No, I burned a giant hat. So you have to talk Shit. into the microphone. I, I burned a giant hat. That's why I'm wearing this one. Well, you didn't have to repeat that one. but Right. <laughs> it didn't work before either. Joe, you know what I liked about uh, your material is that uh, I couldn't tell when jokes started and ended. Yeah, it until, like until, you, until you said next one. All right, so that didn't work. Like it was, I didn't even know what was... Was that just me? I mean, this, you guys were completely silent. Well, I as thought well. it was going to be funny that when I said, "Well, I have visions fucking you," so they didn't go that way. But what was she saying? I don't have visions fucking you. I thought you said that she said the same thing as you. Yeah. I was confused. No, what I said is, uh, she said, "Joe, I don't have visions fucking you." So I told her, "Well, look, I have visions fucking you. Isn't that mean we're halfway there?" That's what I said. But why would she tell you that she doesn't have visions of fucking you? Because I asked her out, and that's what she said. You asked her out on a date. Yeah. How did you say that? Like, how did that go? Let's go out. I like you. That's it. You just walked right up to her and said that no, out of I nowhere? I said on the phone. You called, called her? I mm. called her. How'd you get her number? She gave it to me. When? Uh, at her house. Uh, the, where she worked at the hotel in the uh, Waikiki. So you're in Hawaii. Yeah. I lived there about 18 years. But hey, he also said she broke up with her boyfriend. So when did that happen? Um, about two days before that I called relevant? her. How did you find out that she had broken up with her boyfriend? She told me. How did she tell you? Ooh. She, uh, I broke up with him because I got fed up with him working part-time for 10 years. You what? He got fed up with her working part-time for 10 years. But where were you when she told you this information? Uh, where she worked at. Were you staying at that hotel? No, no, I used to go visit her all the time. You used to just show up at the hotel. <laughs> See, now I think we're getting somewhere. Here yeah. we go. Um, so you used to show up at the hotel that she worked at, but you weren't you weren't staying there doing anything. You were just there. To no, I was just visiting her once in a while, hoping. Uh, Even though she had a boyfriend. Up. Yeah, well, there's OPP. I don't know what's crazier. I love you. <laughs> I don't know what's I crazier, the fact that you would show up at that hotel regularly or the fact that she would update you on her boyfriend Loser. breaking up with her. Uh, <laughs> no, I just like visiting her, that's all. 
And I used to visit her, and there's all the girls, Sandy. And then I finally did. Where did oh. Sandy work? Uh, I forgot. No, she used to be no, a coffee didn't. shop. <laughs> did no. she have a boyfriend, too? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you think that I the, dated a girl from Chicago. That worked out. Do you think there's a chance that maybe they're just telling them they have boyfriends? There might be a chance. But I'm amazed that she would tell you that she didn't. She'd like to tell me her, her business. So, they so when do. you said... <laughs> How did, wow, she gave you her number, too. That's interesting. She's like one of those girls who likes hanging out with other guys and not girls. Um, she has a lot of guy friends. And her boyfriend didn't care. Did you ever hang out with her outside of the hotel where she was working? Yeah, I used to go to lunch with her and stuff like that. Nice. I used to go to lunch with her. I used to go to the beach with her because her boyfriend didn't like doing anything. So I wow. I was she was a nice, cute little Chinese girl. Oh, oh. why'd you go racist? <laughs> Uh, because she's a Chinese girl. No, <laughs> good point. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, how many chicks have you uh, have you killed before? How many girls? Yeah. Uh, should I include prostitutes and strippers? No, 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 no. Just, n Just uh, humans. In innocent victims. <laughs> um, let's the see. When I was when I had hair, about eight. Then. All right. Chicago. We it's so about three chicks. No. <laughs> no, it's more than that. Well, in school, I was pre it was pretty good. It was like nine in school. <laughs> Wait, he just went from eight Marks to nine. Five. Uh, Joe, I'm pretty thing. sure we're all going to have to testify in court after your appearance <laughs> here tonight. So uh, thank you. Uh, hey, you guys have anything? You wanna, any questions or anything for Joe, guys? Dude, I killed Stephen Baldwin's career. <laughs> True. You and Christ. I know, babe. Bio dome two, bio dome two. You really want that sequel, don't you? Yeah, dude. You think the Baldwin would ever do it? Dude, he's been calling me up to do it. But it's like he wants to do it with no cursing and no drug references. You're out on that shit, right? Yeah, dude, you gotta have that stuff. Purple sticky punch, purple sticky ba uh, uh. <laughs> Uh, fuck yeah. Okay, can I go now? Sure. <laughs> yeah, you can. How dare you? I like how he. I like how he Dressed wears up. a Hawaii shirt to do Hawaii material. Smart. And shorts. It really, it really <laughs> nails it. <laughs> really hammers it home. You know what? Maybe that first guy should have worn his casino uniform. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> the little green visor might have really taken it up. Register. <laughs> oh, it would have been great. Fuck yeah. Joe, you're not on Twitter, huh? No. <laughs> That's shocking. You know what? I wish he's more people ready to adopted date, that. But he's not ready to tweet. Yeah. <laughs> he's not ready. At least he knows where he stands. This should almost be like a driver's license. You should have to be able to show you can tweet before yeah. they give you that privilege. It's true. D dude, what do you mean? Have you seen my Twitter? No, no, actually, you're one of the only people yeah. I ever had to follow and immediately unfollow, Polly. <laughs> what, do you, stuff, what do you mean, dude? If, if Polly, if you think if I were to ask Sandy uh, what uh, some of his uh, favorite Polly tweets that he's seen, what would they be? <laughs> About to go on stage with Sambi, S stars, and Babji. Wow, funny he, shit. <laughs> Uh, hi, babes, about to go to the mansion. <laughs> uh, and, you know, hey, Cincinnati, I'm about to be there. Come, <laughs> come to the shows. You know, hey, hey, Polly has a business side, too, and if you watch the movie Polly Shore is Dead, came out in 2000, if you go to the special features... And you listen, came out. He, he's a smart guy, and he has a lot to say about the entertainment business because he's been in here since a small boy in this club, you know? Yeah. That's not true at all, the things <laughs> you just said. No, you got to check See, it out. See, he the said it. Features. There you go. Hmm. Our next comedian, everybody, goes by the name of Jonathan Tumblin. <laughs> yep. Cue up the Van Halen. What's up, y'all? Um, when I moved to L.A., I learned quick that you got to be uh, color appropriate. 
But I didn't know it applied to Hollywood. I was walking down the street on Hollywood Boulevard, and I was approached by this gang of Negroes. They came up behind me, and they were like, what up, cuz? What you doing with all that blue on, cuz? And I was stumped, because I'm not a bitch, but I was scared, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it wasn't going to go over well if I got jumped by a bunch of skinny jean wearing dudes and shit. So, um, you know, I did the only thing I knew to do when I'm in trouble. I went back to my roots, and I was like, uh, excuse me, my brother. I don't know anything about any set that you talk about. I'm just trying to get to the club over here. And they let me go, man. They were like, you wanted them real niggas, huh? That's it. Nice. There you go. Mm. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, he, he killed it more than the other people. I have that same punchline to a lot of my jokes. <laughs> but... Dude, that's one of my jokes word for word. <laughs> <laughs> I stole it from Pauly. Yeah, always... Sometimes people just, you know, have the same thoughts. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I've, I've always like, been amazed. I think that... like a brother. Paul, you're going racist now. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Dude, I was in the wash. I was shut the fuck up. What was the wash? I don't even know about that. Dude, Snoop Dogg and Dre. The remake of the car wash. Yeah, dude. Oh, with George Carlin. That's what they call it. Richard Burton. I've always found it a little crazy that gangs do uh, use color differential. It's crazy as hell, but I mean, the government does the same thing. The government? Yeah. yeah. Like Democrats and Republicans? The Demobloods and the Democrats and the Republicans, or whatever you call them. I don't know what I call it. I don't <laughs> call it any of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. It's a different world I live in. You know what I mean? Everything's a gang to me. Well, which one? Which side are you on? I'm like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Sex is like that game. Sorry. <laughs> Not for me. Or guess who? In some people's cases. <laughs> Operation because she's only four. I think I did good, y'all. They're not talking to me. Just don't hit the side. <laughs> not talking don't to me at all. Side. Don't scrape the DNA off into the girl. Oh. What? Hey. Does anybody? Hey, snorty. <laughs> Has anybody ever tried to get you in a, in a gang before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was younger, uh, I went to my stepdad and I was like, "Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna join a gang." And he's like, "Son, if you're gonna join a gang, like you gotta whoop my ass, because I'm not gonna let, let that happen." And you know, like I just didn't do it. Wow. Does, I have a it, joke about it though, where I did beat his ass and join a gang, though. But you didn't. <laughs> but does I, it does it work anything like the NBA draft? Like, do you have to declare? It kind of <laughs> It kind of does. Like they, they like look I'm at, looking to thug. They look at your, like, phys Phew. your physical specs. Come it, to the combine. <laughs> let shoot, us see how you, you shoot know. a few niggas or two, and then yeah. They're like watching you at the arcade, the shooting games. Like <laughs> yeah, they watch you. Like notes. if you want to get a really side. good workout for the Latin Kings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pauly is on fire tonight. He uh. is. <laughs> this is the sharpest he's ever been. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Pauly's killing. Um... Uh, fuck yeah. What were we talking? That was really good. Gangs. So there's yeah. not really any tips because it's already pretty, pretty good. So yeah, yeah. Funny as hell, y'all. Give That's really fun. good stage presence. Yeah, everything's good. It held. I like you held the hat. You took it off. Oh yeah. You, like respectful. Fun. Yeah. Pretty. Like the dinner table. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, Jonathan right. Tumblin. He's J Sherlock T on Twitter at J Sherlock T. No clue was the name of that. Uh, was the name of the the topic? They should always bring black people up to Van Halen. Yeah, that was funny. Uh, Patriots known for his accidental racism. He's originally from Texas. Uh, he uh, sometimes just doesn't know any better of exactly what he's saying and you, you'll notice it pops up sometimes like yeah. a patriot what'd you think of jonathan tumble yeah i think you, know, you guys summed it up pretty good uh, i i like the female brothers we, we went over that i like the female hombres even longoria oh you're I like her feet. I like her I like, I like all did that. we talk about evil Longoria? no not at all we went off on a real uh attention attention <laughs> what did he say I'm like Ross Perot. I'll just I'll say what I want. Wow. Have you ever met a girl that has a little hair on her toe? Uh, no. I gotta be shaved. I like her legs and everything clean. No hair. Hmm. You, you can have some hair on the pouch. That's okay. 
Have you ever been with a chick that had hairy legs? Uh, maybe a little bit, but never out of control or anything. Have you ever been with a chick? Yes, yes. Hell yeah. But it has been a while. When are the, when's yeah. the last two times you hooked up yeah, with girls again? I told you the last time I had sex was uh, May of 2004, the, the last episode of Friends. I played with a girl's feet. <laughs> That's remember, uncomfortable. Remember that song? No one told you life was gonna be that way. Your job's a joke, you broke. Your love life went astray. Seems like you're always stuck in second gear. When it hasn't been your day, week, or month, or even your year, I'll be there for you. Mm. The Rembrandts. You remember that song? There you go. That was a catchy ass song. Yeah? The last time you got laid, did you own that costume? Oh, no, I just got this back in uh, in May when Iron Man 3 came out. It took me a year and a half, Sandy, to get this costume. I ordered it from Norway, and I waited a long time. I didn't think I was going to get it. There was a lot of legal problems, health issues with the sculptor. Didn't think I was going to get it, but I got it. It's good. To, it's and it good changed to... my life because I, I, I came to the comedy store, and Tony put me on this show, and, and it's really cool. I got all these fans on Twitter, and they love me. Who did, who did you have sex with the night Friends ended? What? I said, who did you have uh, sex with? I was a bartender girl at the Sugar Shack. I was a DJ there in Dallas. The Sugar Shack? Yeah. Did you ever fuck during Mad About You? Uh, no. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> what about Caroline in the City? Uh, no, 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 no. Have you ever tried to fuck any of your Twitter followers? Um, well, I'm, I'm hoping things are going to change for me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to meet women, and um, it's just a matter of time before I get lucky again. Can I ask you something? If you met a girl that adored you because of your persona with the, with the costume on, yeah. would you fuck her with the costume on? Yeah. Or... <laughs> Quick. No hesitation there Quick whatsoever. Answer. I don't think you got the final word out on that and question. If anybody in the adult film business wants to get with me, I'm ready to be signed up. Put me on contract. Wow. Hey. What would your porn name be? Ah. What would be the Iron Patriots' porn motto or porn uh, name? Share your banana with the Iron Patriot. <laughs> Wait, share your banana? Are you doing gay porn? No, no, not that. Hold on, are you getting pounded? <laughs> share your banana. Hey, uh, Iron Patriot, we actually have a lady in the audience. It's in the adult industry. Uh, oh, really? And uh, Mia Lee, how are you doing today? I'm good. Oh, um, you're very beautiful. Thanks. I try, I guess. I came out squinty eyed like this, and you guys like it. Um, Would you ever work with the Iron Patriot? I just did a shoe for fucking machines, so if you rub elbows with kink.com, oh. and Marvel gives a release, I guess. Ah. So. He could wear well, here. yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're already uh, questioning whether or not, because Marvel in some forms, you know, it's in, we put yeah. us in quite the conundrum because they own the Iron Patriot. Yeah. Well, this, However, is, this is kind of a custom model, so I might not have as much trouble. Well, we already blue. found a solution, actually, because we want to avoid, uh, you know, there's been rumors of a lawsuit, a uh, pending lawsuit, uh, Death Squad versus Marvel. And we wouldn't want any, we wouldn't want anything of the such. So I think we're going to uh, bring a yeah. We're going to start bringing beards. Yeah. And, uh, we're going to try some different looks for you. Like in the a future. curly hipster mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think nice. I should just call myself the Comic Patriot instead of trying to do Iron Patriot anymore? I think you could call yourself the Rocketeer because I think the pattern that counts. That has oh. Because your career's about put to a take fin off. On the head. <laughs> yeah. If you just put a fin on the head and call yourself the Rocketeer. Oh yeah. They'll probably appreciate Good the publicity. Idea, yeah. They'll sell some VHS. <laughs> the Rocketeer. Maybe yeah. Yeah. Laserdisc. <laughs> wow. I see, I see good things Dude, laser, Laserdisc is the best way to watch my movie. <laughs> so true. <laughs> the Munchies and the Weasel. Right. <laughs> Back to the bucket we go on that note. Um, your next comedian is Leah Nauer. <laughs> I was a virgin until I was 20. Um, I was even in a club called Abstinence is Cool. Because I was, I was waiting to fall in love. And um, I found it. I fell in love with sex. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're going on a year and a half, and we're thinking of taking our relationship to the next level. Anal. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited. Um, but that being said, I've only had sex with one guy, and it totally works in my favor, because now, like, whenever we're in a fight and I'm mad at him, I'll just be like, yeah, well, you're the worst fuck I've ever had. And then when we're happy, he's still the worst fuck I've ever had. 
He's seven years older than me, and I love older guys, but there's one thing that they do that I cannot stand. I'll be talking to a guy, he'll find out that I'm 21, and then they'll be like, oh, whoa, am I gonna get arrested for talking to you? Uh, are you gonna rape me while you're talking to me? Yeah. Probably. There it is. Thanks, I'm Leah Knauer. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck yeah. How old are you? I'm 21. And you, uh, you, you've you only really slept with one person before? Yep. Um, do you have a Twitter? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make a suggestion from your material? Please. You should have sex with another guy, say a movie star, and then... Smart. You'll have a lot more material because you could talk about that, babe. Okay. Thanks, Polly. Yeah. <laughs> Here, put your number in my phone. I'm about to come. You should wait, put my dick Wait, but you're not a movie mouth. star. <laughs> <laughs> why? Wait, wait. What did, wait, what did she it? just said? Polly's not a movie <laughs> star. Oh, my goodness. He was on a made-for-TV <laughs> movie on country I'm music sorry, television two years ago. <laughs> it was called Whiskey Business. He, that was that did come out. He played a. It's uh, another thing, much like the Rocketeer, something I haven't thought of in quite a while. <laughs> um, whiskey business. Yeah, he, I think he played this situation essentially. Dude, I, it was, it was Polly Short goes Jersey Shore. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, fuck yeah! Well, what an interesting perspective you must have as a 21 year old. How long have you lived in L.A.? Two years. How long have you been 21? Um, Great question. Since June. <laughs> At least two years, probably. Yeah. <laughs> when did you first have sex? How long ago was this? Um, it was on my, well, I was technically 19, but also 20. It was like on my 20th birthday, the eve of. Wow. So, yeah. Jesus. Women are so fucked up like that. Yeah. I'm saving it for the eve of my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fuck yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think just, you know, more fucking... <laughs> cool, I can do that. Are, are you really gonna do anal? Are you gonna? Are you gonna? Have you done anal? Tried, it didn't did, work out. Did it hurt too much? Or just not no, it oil? just like didn't work. Oh, because oh. he was gay I mean, or something? I don't know. I want to try again, but <laughs> so, so smiley. You gotta have a glass. You gotta have a glass of red wine and a Valium. I'm pretty yeah. sure I just. Good to know. Okay. I'm pretty sure, sure I just heard Red Band come in his pants. By <laughs> like, I heard this weird liquid release and little splash. I actually heard him come in my <laughs> pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's heated because of the salmonella. It's a little hot. Um, fuck yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up? Um, almost a year and a half. Wow. So you had six months of pre-fucking comedy. No, I was a virgin when I started comedy. So I had a lot of material about being a virgin, and then... I had to scrap all of that when I finally had sex. <laughs> Jeez. For the best, I guess. <laughs> Did you find a anyone at a comedy show ever related to your virgin material? Um, <laughs> I most mean, of the guys. Some no, <laughs> yeah, no. Some girls like out of pity would woo, like they're proud of me. Why did you choose to remain a virgin for so painfully long? I was waiting for love. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm a hopeless romantic. Jeez. Yeah, you're 21. That'll, that'll. <laughs> I, I can't wait start until she's 25 to see the fucking material. <laughs> right. So I do a lot of anal, and I don't know if you guys know different. what blown out means, but <laughs> <laughs> I got it's the gonna pink be sock. <laughs> it's gonna be a beautiful set, though. I got the cutest pink sock. Did I announce that last name right? Nauer with it's, a K? It's Kanauer. Kanauer. Yeah. Kanauer. Wow. Yeah. It's a, a weird subject matter to talk about how you just had sex and you've only had sex with one person because it automatically makes us all think like, fuck. You know, and now we're all thinking about sex while looking at you. Sure. And so yeah. it, it's very a weird... Laney, uh, is that what you're thinking? But at least thinking? it's not in like a dirty way. No, no, it's in a really very dirty way. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm thinking like fucking but fucking not... you in the ass while fucking a dildo at the same time and shitting on you. Sure, and stuff like I'm that. not like, talking I'm, about that, though. It's boner amazing. pills. It's everything. amazing that you have that stuff like that in the back of your oh. brain <laughs> to even <laughs> use when the time still isn't right but but, but when I, i'm and honestly but when you when you talk about it and you're so beautiful when you talk about such a, a a thing like this you automatically kind of like you i got brainwashed and i'm like i have no idea what you're talking about uh 
Could yeah, I a don't bucket know. of ice or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it's weird <laughs> sitting next to dudes with boners on a stage. <laughs> oh god, well, it's not weird, but it's it's only weird because it's out of his pants right now. <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. Would you fuck her boyfriend I dry to get it off. to her? What? Would you fuck her boyfriend to get to her? Uh, Hand job? Is that her boyfriend, the guy right up He'll there? He'll take the her from behind. That's you him. take her from behind <laughs> him. <laughs> kind of yellow jacket, right? Um, but anyways, what I was saying is that it's very, it's, it is distracting when you, when you bring up sex and you're so innocent and beautiful looking. So like, be prepared that a lot of your material <laughs> is probably going to be a lot of guys going, uh, instead of like, Right. I don't know. Another option. <laughs> another option is to keep the material and get fat and gross. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Always a That's equal not plan. No? Okay. No. Patriot, what did you think yeah, of Leah? You know, you know, I've heard Dr. Drew say that that constant anal sex can be dangerous. Because when you get older, you might have to wear diapers. <laughs> the shit just fall out. Okay. There you, you go. Be careful. Be careful Fa with that. Farrah Fa Fawcett Fawcett got colon cancer from it. That's pr basically, it's pretty much as good as I think Dr. Drew would say it if he was here. So, uh, yeah. Will you show Iron Patriot your feet? No, no, no. I was like so afraid that he was going to look at them, actually. Because uh, oh. I am wearing flats. Okay. Cool. Thank you. What's wrong with your feet? I love no, the, it's just that they're You got out. one of those retarded little toes? I don't know. It just like freaks me out knowing that people get turned on by feet her, and then I'm wearing flats. Her toe flats. cleavage is Those, are, those are like naked out, shoes though. you're wearing. Naked, sh it looks like you're not wearing shoes uh, at all. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. He already looked. That, that's why he said he wasn't going to look. He had already looked. She's not wearing open toed sandals. I can already tell. Well, by what? The smell? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just looked. I glanced down. There the, you can't see nothing. How long, how long do you think she was on the stage until you had to look at her feet? Uh, I just tell the truth. Her. You know, you know, I'm always looking at everything in this club to make sure it's the security <laughs> Yeah. Actually, you're not. We can see where you're looking, <laughs> yeah. and it's only within, like, a 30-degree radius. So, <laughs> hmm. uh, Seriously, Patriot, what, what part of her being up here did you look at her feet? Uh, I glanced as she, as she got on stage. <laughs> Pretty early on. <laughs> That's right, Patriot. When you have a foot fetish, you own that shit. I Patriot. mean, I don't know. You're the only pal that I know that has yeah. a foot fetish. Patriot, though. would you consider going to podiatry school? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you, do you get a pedicure every once in a while? You... I don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> What'd she say? She said she didn't want to tell him the That's answer. That's a perfect answer. Yeah, so That's you. exactly what I would say, too. Leah, Leah Kanauer, yeah, everybody. Kanauer. Kanauer. It's yeah. an interesting... Uh, Hey. She's got an O-ring that doesn't even let dicks hey. in at this point. It's yeah. true. It's like, very, yeah. very tight. Yeah. Most chicks at 21 are just, you know, I mean, they're on the Sibian already nowadays, you know? Well, is this guy already following her on Twitter yeah, over here? Yeah, I think what's that's going what's on? happening right Followed! Now. Wow. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so if you follow him back, you're assuredly going to get a DM in about 13 minutes. Yeah. So. You like, po you want a podcast? <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> Welcome to show business, kid. Do you like Olive Garden? Yes. It's interesting. Bruce Boyman? Oh, wow. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. This is amazing. Get this whipper snapper up here. Fuck yeah. Oh, holy fuck. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, you know, Jewish people have been attracted to comedy, you know, through history. So for the next minute, I'm going to be your village idiot. Yes. You know, I love uh, react interacting with younger people. You know, it's always interesting. Um, you know, uh, young people check out older, young guys check out older women, you know, sexy ones, and they call them MILF. And I'm hoping some nice lady, young ladies checking me out thinking, hey, he's a father I'd like to hump, which would make me filth. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah. <laughs> my minute. <laughs> In fact, my last girlfriend said I was just like the dog, you know? And she's right. My dog jewels because at Sam's Club they have kibbles and bits. I jewel at the strip club because they have nipples and clits. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> you know, we're all here trying to. Uh, you know, build a comedy career, you know, and it's dangerous. In the very last episode of the Three Stooges, Curly injured his groin. 
he became a eunuch. Nyuk, nyuk, nyuk. <laughs> God damn it. Wow, that's a minute. God damn I it. am an instant fucking fan yeah, of Bruce too. Boy, man. Yeah. It, it's, it's cool because he reminds me, like, he, from the waist up, he's like a dad. But yeah. then from the waist to the knees, he's like stone cold, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> you are your own. well ventilated. You know? Yeah, well, and I'm sure it won't be long until he has the two black knee braces. So uh, <laughs> yeah. it actually, he's just going to grow more and more into stone cold from the waist down. But it, but instead of beers, he'd be crushing Manischewitz. Bruce, Absolutely. I love your fucking style, man. Like you, you'll do a joke and then it goes right into something like some kind of interesting. I love the bark at the kibbles and uh, I mean, I didn't like ki- uh, nipples and clits that much but when that bark came out I w- my tune changed immediately well it's better to bark into the microphone than drool into the microphone like the dog so right hey, good point wonderful too. mic with no cord hey. yeah it's like fucking crazy ass technology the cordless mic um we got it special um, I think even even the the short sleeve business shirt that might be what stone cold works <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he has got a cubicle job now now it's from years of being a chiropractor you were a chiropractor? Retired. And I'll tell you something. I figured, chiro- you, you figured you'd go into career change and start cracking people up, huh? <laughs> Son <laughs> of a right? bitch. Am I right? Chiropractor Son jokes, people. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that for nine years. Well, you know, a chiropractor's right. work is up to his hands. But when Obamacare pays for fisting, we'll be in our work up to our elbows. Fucking Obama. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking Obama. <laughs> The bear is angry that you tried that joke out after yeah. your time was up. I think I think that joke would have worked if he had a barking or Curly's laugh type sound effect after True. it. Can you do the eunuch just that one part again? The end of that? Just, Redundancy? Just, just, just say the word eunuch. Nick, Nick. Eunuch, Nick, Nick, Nick. Is that what you do? It's so funny. Like <laughs> Did it differently that time, but mm. I still am in love with you. Um, what do you, so what do you do now? How long, have you, how long are you in L.A.? You live here? Been in L.A. for a year, doing this for six months. After uh, years in Portland, Oregon, a great town, good comedy scene. And it was going so well when life fell apart, you know, family courts and things like that. Oh, that's that that you into this world fast. Right. Right. This is going Maury yeah. pretty quickly. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Family courts are terrible. Got to get that on the record. Right. My ex-wife used to, uh, used to terrorize me with the family court. So I turned her into Homeland Security as the Unimom. Dude. Oh, you better look at it. Oh, there's Razor. Yeah. What else was nice is... Oh, the, the bear he, is launching fireworks yeah. still. He creepily rubbed his belly when he told that joke. Yeah. It was like a nice... Yeah, just, like, ooh. that's where his wife is now. Like, he ate her. <laughs> you know, you know we've, all, we've all heard that acronym, MILF, but I've never heard the filth. Father, I'd like to fuck. And I'm Pretty sure... Good. Patriot, you must be a really uh-huh. big fan of uh, Patriot. You must be a really big fan of Bruce because I'm pretty sure that underneath the suit, you guys are about the same age, right? No, I'm I'm 46. <laughs> and oh. let me tell you something, Tony. You might not make it to 46 with all your smoking. Oh they, Jesus! Whoa, take it easy on me. Or that lip. I think. Yeah, I they think, put the Surgeon General warning on cigarettes for a reason, Tony. Good, valid point. Thank you. Thank you, Patriot. Meanwhile, the guy that was making your suit had health issues with whatever paint and whatever the fuck's on that, and you trap your body in it for God only knows how long a day. No, because his body was hurting because he wears an Iron Man too. He had a lot of pain in his back and hands. And- Wait, the guy that wa- wears an Iron Man suit is the same guy that sculpted your uniform? Yeah, he was one of the first ones to make a walking Iron Man suit back in 2007. He was already working on this thing, even before Iron Man came out in 2008. He wow. was working on it. This guy is one of the best sculptors in the world. Yeah. Fuck yeah, there you go. I'm glad Bruce is up here for this part. Yeah, Bruce, thank you so much. Uh, please come back. Sign up thank again you. soon. Very funny stuff. He's just holding the microphone like a priest waiting oh, for the song to be over. Oh, he's got business cards. Look at Fuck that. Fuck yeah. Oh, thank shit. You. He threw. Sh- he insulted us and called us he, homeless. He just, yeah, he what just did said he, he gives, he said, he I gives give these, these to all the homeless, homeless people. people we meet. He wow. meets. He doesn't have a Twitter handle, but you can call him at, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he does have AOL, however. Oh, yeah. yeah. AOL version yeah. 3.5, it says on here. Wow. That was a good year. AOL.com. 10,000 free hours. If, if, I, if, I, if I had no idea who this was and I saw the card, I would know exactly what he looks like. 
It's got an AOL email, his phone number, and a brick wall with tomatoes Bl- smashed up against it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought it was blood stains. So, <laughs> one's a blood stain and one's a tomato. Family courts to the belly room. He, that guy's making it right now. Yeah. Hey, Bruce Boyman. I don't know where your ex-wife is, but uh, I think she can see who's winning now. Hell you know yeah. What I'm saying? Totally. All right. She might have gotten the money, but. <laughs> yeah. Did it not go well, the verdict? Uh, <laughs> well, feel free to come back here. Use this place as an outlet. One more time for Bruce Boyman, everybody. Yeah. Finding his dreams out here. Great sense of humor. Keep rocking it, Bruce. Put your hands together for your next comedian, Jeff McKinnon, everybody. Here he is. At Wicked Comedy. Putting on the red. Uh, uh, you already met uh, my girlfriend, Leah Knauer. Uh, oh, yes. wow. Her time up here was a thrill for me. <laughs> she stole this whole room. I'm the worst fuck she's ever had. And at 21, I don't think she realized I don't give a shit. I just don't. Uh, and interesting enough, I, I know that uh, you posed that Brian might have to fuck me to get to her. Uh, and I'm not putting anything on the table, but uh, truth be told, I am bisexual. Uh, which is a label I don't, it's not a label I like. I prefer sexual double threat. <laughs> because uh, when people hear bisexual, they're like, what? So that just means you'll just f- fuck anybody? It's like, no. There are still ugly people. <laughs> like, I like very specific types of people. I like short, beautiful women and guys who look kind of like me. I spent like the last 25 years trying to figure out if I'm bisexual or just the most extreme narcissist. Narcissist. Narcissist, thank you. That's it, everybody. Thanks. Yes. There you go. Jeff McCannon, everybody. Oh. Hello. Hello. Interesting. So you're the one that took uh, Leah's virginity, huh? I did. Fucking A. So do I just, can I just put it like on your cheek or something like that? <laughs> can I just drag it on your chin? Red Band, just retweet <laughs> me once and uh, you can get a blowjob. Okay. Uh, retweet it right here. I think, it, I, I think it's I, from him, though. They do kind of look alike a little bit. I kind of have a question. Yeah. If uh, he's bisexual, how did the ass sex not work out? <laughs> I know that was going to be posed. You know, I, in general... I mean, I'm not a fan of uh, only anal dude sex, butthole. Period. Oh, okay. Across the board, I find the butthole to be uh, disgusting. In so a when you're with another dude, you guys are just like blowing each other, or just ramming dicks, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like a mountain goat. Yeah. We we have <laughs> purple we have sword head fights wins. and we watch Kathy Griffin. I don't know. That's uh, that's all there is. All right, so you, you wrote today, Joe the plumber said, wanting a white president doesn't make you racist. It actually makes you American. Actually, it makes you a racist American. And I just retweeted that. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. yeah. All right, Leah, uh, can we get you up here? Patriot, secure the back. We've got business to deal with. Fuck yeah. Thanks, he Brian. wants a podcast, too, so this uh, is going to work out. <laughs> uh, looks like a double retweet. Nice. Scroll down. Uh, I, my only advice would be um, you should definitely break up with that girl. And, uh, <laughs> look, I'm trying to help Red Band here as much yes. as I possibly can. <laughs> um, no, it's we uh, two uh, comedy couples. It's strange. I think in general, I have someone to hang out with while I watch this show. Look, it's either gonna not work out for you guys as a couple or. F- as comedians. Yeah, to be honest, if she had done much better than me, I probably would have broke up with her tonight. <laughs> oh. Well, that's Are funny you, you say kidding? that because yeah. I was going to uh, say she actually did other. better than you tonight. So. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Brian, <laughs> you're in business. What's that? Whoa. Jesus Christ. Right. Who's this? Thank you. Wild little I have fire a mirror. That's the snorter, too. Oh, yeah. Can't win them all. She'll oh. let you fuck those. Um, gaping nostrils she has <laughs> um, because she's a snorter yeah. she was the snorter people she doesn't have a weird nose or anything okay Jesus All right. All she's right. got a gaping attitude yeah, Come on, you're killing me. the mood where's that what is that so oh, it that's sucks you. how you guys broke okay. up <laughs> 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 
Well played. Awesome. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So what are you going to do now that you're single? <laughs> uh, Dudes. Snorting lady. <laughs> Kink.com, apparently. I never knew that that opportunity existed here. So. Oh, yeah. I know a pretty desperate man by the name of uh, Bruce. Bruce Boyman. <laughs> yeah. If I could get his AOL account. And I think <laughs> probably the best way to make his ex-wife see how much better he's doing is to get a shot of a man sucking his dick. Yeah. And there's nothing much gayer than having your last name be Boyman. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, other than Larry Lady Boy, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, you got you two should totally fuck. Uh, Bruce, would you be interested in fucking Jack McKinnon while Red Band fucks his girlfriend? Wait, hey, where did it become that he fucks me? Listen, man, you don't like you buttholes. said you don't like buttholes, so he, that's true. Bruce is down with anything. Fuck at this yeah, point. totally. Take it off. There's nobody that owns that New pair of denim you know? shorts he was wearing that doesn't love anal. <laughs> That's a fact. They make yeah. sure they, they yeah, you want these Levi's shorts that go above your knee? Do you love anal? And if the answer is no, they're like, you got to go get Wranglers. Yeah. <laughs> You're required to steal the denim shorts usually unless you have a barbed wire. <laughs> yeah, tattoo. guys. I brought my Hot Ride 5000 too. Your girl's in luck. Perfect. Yeah. Wow. That? That's, that's boner pills right there. Oh, okay. Hot Rod 5000 is more than yeah. a boner pill. It's what pill. this program's brought to you by, not officially, <laughs> but it's what fuels Red Band. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, Snorter, would you be willing to snort uh, some uh, Hot Rod 5000? No, no, no. you what snort, would snort a boner pill? There's only one left. Have you ever snorted a boner? <laughs> wow. Are you 21? Do you want to be? <laughs> there goes Jeff McKinnon, Thank everybody. Jeff. Good luck. At Wicked Comedy on Twitter. <laughs> Fuck yeah. She waited for love, and love was with a bisexual. Unbelievable. I know. It's, he loves blowing dudes. <laughs> She's waiting for love. He's waiting for a hole of some sort. They Dude. really are in love. I just saw them. I just saw them give each other a kiss on the lips when he got back up uh, there. Nice. Already wow. swapping comma. Just right. like everything's cool. Dude, bisexuals when you when you have sex and then then you say goodbye, right? Yes. <laughs> yep. Oh. It's like we just fuck, babe. Bye. Oh, Polly, you are unbelievable <laughs> tonight. Not stop fire. All right, I think we have about time for about one more out of the bucket name. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what we got. Put your hands together for Sarah Wineshank, everybody. Fuck yeah. Ooh. I'm looking for Molly. The shanks of Molly. 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 What's up, everyone? Yeah. Anyone eat raisins? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One of the only adults I know who eats raisins, right? Like after five years of age, no one's like, I want a snack, let me have a raisin. Let me have a handful of raisins. Cause you're still fucking hungry, you know what I mean? And raisins are weird because like most other dried fruit, it's just called what it is after the word dried. Like dried apricots, dried cherries, dried cranberries. Some like uppity French person was like, we're giving to kids in raisins. And then it's stuck. It's weird. Like, the only other fruit that's not called dried what it is is plums. Fumes. It's weird. I hate picky eaters that are children. Nothing's worse than a picky ch child eater, except for their, their parents that caters to them. You know what I mean? Because life's hard. Like your kid, if they don't want to eat tomatoes, let them peel that shit off. Because life's hard. You know? If they don't, it's weird. It's like, just take off the onions, okay? Because life's hard. There's lots of challenges. All right. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> Notice that you have a lot of food jokes. I know. But I just like it because I'll, I don't know. I was like on the fence. I was like, do I want to do food again? And then I was like, yeah, I do. I do. But I have other jokes too. But lately I've been like in a real food thing right now. That's awesome. But remember, she did do Jimmy Buffett at the last show. Yeah. Right. Yeah, wasn't food. Do you really like raisins a lot? I hate raisins. You hate raisins? Yeah. Why? Because they're disgusting. Like, Even no one wants ones? raisins. It's like, I'd much rather have a chocolate chip. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I have a bowl of raisin bran every morning. <laughs> yeah, because. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Of course yeah. you do. 
It's a ringing endorsement for Raisin Bran right now. It really is. Free sure. advertisement that yeah. they're very excited. I have excited. another ball at night, too. I have two balls a day. Really? Have you been smoking pot lately, Patriot? Um, I'm sober right now, but when I get home, I'll have a smoke down. Any, uh, any deep thoughts or insights from uh, the last? Yeah, yeah. The most difficult question to answer is how can we all simultaneously be at the center of our own universe? There you go. Mm. Sarah, when you're writing raisin jokes, like, are, yes. are you looking at raisins? Are you Googling raisins, like, uh, for inspiration or anything like that? You right. know, I was actually hanging out with some children babysitting, but I didn't want to say that because I'm doing stand-up, you know? Right. So I was babysitting, and I was watching this, like, little girl just eat, like, handfuls of raisins, and I was just like, that's foul. If I was hungry, I would have a snack. I wouldn't just be, like, taking a handful of raisins and, like, pouring it into my mouth. Right. Because they sort of are just rotten grapes, right? Yeah, it's just like a bad taste. It's not even like yeah. sustenance. It's just a taste. Mm. Yeah. What are prunes again? Prunes are dried plums. Oh. Do you like Dr. Pepper? Eh, not really. I like Diet Dr. Pepper. Interesting. That's yeah. what I'm drinking right here, dude. <laughs> hey, you already have a girlfriend on this podcast. Hey. <laughs> and a boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of the boyfriend with this girl. Just yeah. Hey, just keep them both for now until you figure out which one you really like more. Okay. Yeah. Play both sides. Snorty over there, I'm thinking. Yep. Um, it tastes good cookies too. Do you babysit a lot? Is that a lot of your day? Is babysitting? I mean, do you have a lot of material that comes from like watching kids? Um, I spend like a few days a week babysitting during the afternoons. Uh. Yeah, kids, but then, but not too much kids, because I don't want to isolate people if I just talk about kids. You know, not everyone has them. But everybody does have food. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Some people I can't wait till she does oxygen joke jokes. jokes. <laughs> <laughs> really connect with the people. It's just air, you know. Sleep. Make some noise if you if you sleep once in a while. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, well, there you go. Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Uh, keep rocking, Sarah. Regular, regular, always playing out. Portable as well. What's that? She had a tortable bell phone. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's got a tortable bell phone. Yeah, she does. 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 Yeah, she I can throw it out like this, go. <laughs> uh, there's got to be 15 to 16, 7 year olds that are scared of that noise. <laughs> the lasers that must I can crack out. this fiberglass on your head. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. He's not playing in his voice. Playing in his voice. What, 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 was that, what was that accent? Yeah. <laughs> That's Houston Hillbilly. Yeah. You'd be calling your lawyer real quick. You'd be suing me. Is that is that a threat? Yeah. Okay. I like you, Rick, but don't cross the line. Wow, there you go. I think you just got where, called where, out by the Yeah, I was going to say, where is it? Let's find the line. It's right here. <laughs> That's the line, the line that he can't cross <laughs> he physically. Can't get up the step. You're my favorite kid fucking superhero, no doubt. No, no, Green Lantern, then you. Well, it's time for the regular portion of our show where now uh, it's uh, two uh, lovely young ladies um, regularly do a new 60 seconds each week on the show. Uh, no particular order. Um, let's do tonight first. Uh, Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Here she is. I can adjust. Plus, I can just walk up to a mic and just bust. So Hi, guys. What's going on? Um, I want to talk about something a little serious tonight. Uh, I caught my little sister sexting. And I wouldn't be so upset about it, but she's 12 years old. Yeah, it's true. And I'm like, what are you sending? Like, is she sending pictures of herself completely naked? Like, yeah, I just got a Brazilian. Haley, you don't even have armpit hair, you know? She's like, she's being really bad. She, she offered our sister, our other sister, for a threesome. And I'm like, you, you can't even have a twosome. Or a one sum. I'm like, Haley, mom and dad are going to kill you. They can never see this. So I did what every other good big sister would do. I helped her download Snapchat. 
Thank you. Yeah. It's a new minute. What's Snapchat? I don't know. Uh, I'm not a social media I knew you guy. old man is. Yeah, I know. Snapchat's something that you send like a photo or a video and it disappears after a short period of time. So you're like, oh, look at her tits. Oh, it's and gone. And you only have like 10 Are seconds. Are you already friends with her little forever. sister on Snapchat? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very uncomfortable material to kind yeah. of go down. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's well, like Penn really State's finest. So I felt like I had to make a joke about it because I was... It was scary. Maybe not make her 12, because that's she like... She is 12. I she know, is sexting. Fucked up. What? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably one of those that it would be funnier if it wasn't true type yeah. of jokes. Yeah. Yeah, because that's uh, disturbing. Especially when you start talking about her pussy hair and stuff, and it's just like, all right, she's 12 years old, and you're talking about some pussy hair. She, now I'm in my yeah. head thinking about 12-year-old pussy. Right. Well, well, you, aren't like you usual. usually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I know. Normally, I Brian wants to decide when he gets to think of a hairless 12 year old <laughs> pussy. He he's doesn't right. want anybody telling him. Yeah, what he's it. not a if there's grass on the field, play ball guy. He's yeah. a if there's a field, play ball. Right. Sand, I, you have to at least have not. your first period. Yeah. 12 year olds yeah. love playing in fields. So, yeah. So, yeah. Sandlot style. That happened. Okay. Well. You know. did, she, did you say that she invited you to do a threesome? No. She, like, okay, she's really innocent. She doesn't actually, like, hook up with boys and she was just trying to impress an older boy and so she thought that was like the cool thing to say was to like have a threesome 12 years old she's saying this she's already a yeah. fucking cock tease that's she's terrible even, yeah. <laughs> basically dude what were you a virgin oh. till you were 21 <laughs> jeez when did you so start having sex yeah. uh, i was 17 all right well you need to have a serious yeah. talk with your sister before she can physically get pregnant yeah you need yeah, to talk I to did. her mom about this your mom about this i shit. did she told me to make a joke about it. Your mom? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh my God, Kimberly, you have to do that in your freaking comedy. See, I think maybe if you would have done the mom accent I've while talking it. about the little sister pussy. Replace the mom part with the pussy hair. There you go. Oh, okay. Kimberly Congman, Thank everybody. You. Yeah. yeah. Always something new and different. Sandy, I love this look that you have. Yeah. What look? It's like the dude like, Belushi. <laughs> yeah. Very Rick Ross on the beard. That's what I was going for with the yeah. beard. Yeah. All right. I drink a lot of rosé, too, so. Our second comedian, as always, uh, regular here since episode one, Sarah Mostajabi, everybody. All you ever do was What's up, guys? I'm not ready to be a mom. Uh, I'm not ready to wake up angry every day. Um, I've been throwing up every day for like 20 years. I'm not ready to like give up all that hard work. Yeah, fucking that's where you know where I'm going. You know, my mom told me, uh, she said, Sarah, whatever you do, don't have kids. You're just going to fuck them up. Uh, and I said, well, you just, you, what, you don't want to like pass down the tradition or I figured it'd be nice. I'd be afraid of what kind of mom I would be. I was driving through Burbank the other day because I hate myself. Um, and I saw a mom carrying a tiny little dog and dragging a child on a leash. That would definitely be the kind of mom I would be. I've only had one uh, thought or dream where I was a mom. And uh, basically in the dream, there was a baby in a crib. I put a piece of paper on its face and seen. That was, uh, that's what me being a mom is like. So it's just not going to go well. If I lay any eggs, I'm going to step on them. Do you get where I'm going? Who says you have to keep them, right? Yeah. Control out the leaf. There you go. Casey Anthony, Sarah everybody. Sarah. <laughs> the lovely Casey Anthony. It was just a matter of time before she started doing comedy, you know? Yeah, it's, it, while we're on the subject of Casey Anthony, though, I, I think there's still a chance that kid killed herself, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, it's like Michael Vick's dogs. Like, those dogs killed themselves because he wouldn't let them fight anymore. Right. All right, maybe not. Very young suicide, that would have been. Uh, yeah. And plus, the self-burial is hard to explain. <laughs> talent is talent. That's where things get really Sarah, you... Andy, I just I love your smile. So, like, this entire podcast is just me enjoying your smile. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> it's so you. amazing. She's buttering you up, man. I just, <laughs> that's right. Sandy have loves butter. Have you ever had butter. a pregnancy scare before? <laughs> No. You I, want one? Nice. <laughs> wow. No, I'm barren. 
Just so you know, that was the hottest thing every dude in this room heard. <laughs> like, what? Oh, yeah. No pullout. Got it. Uh, yeah. I have one yeah. of those permanent little coat hanger things in my cervix, so, yeah. Pretty great. That, that doesn't sound comfortable at all. No. I like the bit that you had uh, with the holding the dog and dragging the baby. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. That you, you make sure you emphasize that because like that almost sounded like like how it was supposed to sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? I almost was like, wait, wait, she said it the opposite. Aha, that's funny. But yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like you kind of just kind of floated over that and went to the next one. But really emphasize that that's a funny joke, especially in this city. You know? Yeah. So. I legit, I legit saw that and I was so confused by it. Uh, so it'd definitely be the exact kind of parent I am. I wouldn't own a carriage, but I definitely would own one of those little dog carriers. Patriot, what's your input? Now, let me say something to Sarah. Um, I, re I recently watched the film The Kids Are All Right, you know, with uh, Annette Benning and Julianne Moore. They were like a lesbian couple raising kids. Would you see yourself having kids that way or with a guy? Oh, I don't see myself having children. I think that's what this whole bit was about. No, I think you did, Sarah. <laughs> that was pretty much what it was no, all you'd about. You'd be a great mother. Sarah, I know you. I've known you for, for four months now. You'd be a great mother. <laughs> You're crazy, Patriot. This yeah, is you why, really this are. Is why I don't like dudes coming It sounded me. like he was saying more, though, you'd be a great lesbian parent. No, yeah. no, no, either way. I mean, even if she had it with a guy, too. I mean, I just, I see you being great with kids. I just see it. You should start hanging out with her more, Patriot. Yeah, I think we found a love, love made on Kill Tony yeah. tonight, everybody. Oh, yeah. There she goes. Sarah Mostajabi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so much fun tonight. What a blast. Yeah, good times. A lot, uh, of, a lot of great talent out there in other rooms. <laughs> hey, I got my money on Bruce Boyman. He's my, he's my, he's my pick of the night as uh, my, my MVP. He is. I love a guy chasing his dreams. Yeah, he's yeah, I do too. the boy man. <laughs> uh, what do you guys got coming up? Anything to promote? Rick Ingram, you're Rick Ingram on Twitter, which is one of my favorite Twitters to follow. Always funny. And yep, I'm on Twitter and uh, Embrace the Hate podcast, and uh, that's pretty much it for me. Sandy? Same thing. I'm uh, Rick Ingram on Twitter. Uh, Sandy Danto on no, Twitter. No, Sandy Danto on Twitter. Thank you. The regular ladies are Kimberly Congdon and Sarah Dresses on yeah, Twitter. Comic Patriot on Twitter. One of the mainframe, main social media responders of the show. So uh, I'm Tony Hinchcliffe, Red Band. And I'm Red Band. You'll see us uh, October 31st in San Diego, American Comedy Code. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs>